This time on Rock Up Racing, the team heads to their home track, Snetterton, bringing their trusty blue 964 to the calm all Porsche trophy. With three races on the agenda and a grid of 36 cars, the weekend promises to be a true test for the team. From unpredictable weather to controversial results and mechanical issues, they'll face a myriad of challenges. Buckle up because this race weekend is far from calm. Welcome to Rock Up Racing. Good morning. We're back at Snetterton. Good morning, darling. Good morning, darling. We're back at Snetterton, but this time we're with the calm Porsche. Now I realised in the last video I did I did uh, make a mistake and said that we were racing with Bernie's this weekend. Um, we're not. That's in that's in two weeks, isn't it? We're with Bernie's in two weeks at Alton Park. But today we're at Snetterton. Uh, yeah, so with the calm all Porsche trophy today, so it's exciting, always good uh, good race weekend with those guys. But it was, uh, I think it's like 38 cars. It looks like 38 cars on the grid today, so it's going to be it's going to be a busy old day. But uh, but yeah, looking forward to it. The Calm All Porsche Trophy is a thrilling race series that brings together a variety of Porsche models. Run by club manager Philip Waters, the series offers a competitive yet friendly racing environment. The event also supports the Campaign Against Living Miserably Calm, a charity focused on preventing male suicide and raising mental health awareness. This unique series not only delivers high-octane excitement, but also contributes to a cause that resonates with many. Have you done any work to the 964 since last time it went out? Talking about blood brakes oh, right. on Thursday. That's it. Put some fuel in it. Sweet. What work should we be doing to it, Charlie? I don't know. And Tom, you did a, you did a leakage test after Brands, though, didn't yeah, you? Mega. So that's the other work we did. Yeah, yeah. Ah, you did a leakage did test. The, didn't mention that one. Like, Sorry. <laughs> So we've not had to do this for a while. Um, not had to do this for a while. We're uh, in the queue for scrutineering. So since 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 COVID, uh, a lot of the scrutineering has been done by like a, a percentage of the uh, the grid. So like the scrutineers will just go around the paddock and just do whatever they can be bothered. But uh, but now um, we're actually going to the proper scrutineering bay, which means we're queuing up with billion other people and uh, yeah to be told um, everything that we've done is wrong. <laughs> nah it should be fine. It should be fine. So we're on the way to scrutineering and uh, remembered that we're we're actually number 19 today. <laughs> this one's a selection tape. Is it? Oh excellent. There we go. There we go. Quick Tom, they won't screw in here to put the wrong number. They'll think we're imposters. That shows how big the car is, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> Ring wheel and get a 19, mate. Eh? Bring him up now. With the team passing through scrutineering without any issues, 
Rockup Racing can now focus on the qualifying session. In a field of 36 cars, securing a strong qualifying position is crucial. As the team prepares for qualifying, a familiar foe makes its presence known, the rain. This unexpected downpour adds that bit more challenge to the session, making it even more important to adapt quickly and secure a strong starting position. What are you doing? Softening it off to the prison now. So softening the dampers because of the rain? That's it, man. Yeah, it is heavy. So we've, uh, we've just softened up the car because of how heavy this rain is. It's really coming down, so we'll see how it, see how it goes. Some fast cars out there. There is, yeah. They're really fast. So competition is yeah. going to be that 944 turbo. Yeah, it's 996, 911 is fast. Too. 
That's great though. Yeah, yeah. Second, we'll take yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. Bring on the race. Yeah. With clinching second place in the qualifying session, the team turns their attention to the race. It won't be easy though, with Jamie McHugh ahead in his powerful Porsche 944 Turbo, Peter Dillnott in a modern Porsche 911, and Christian Walker close behind in his Cayman S. The top few cars present a formidable challenge. However, the team and Robert are ready to relish this opportunity and face the competition head on. seconds off my fastest but that's probably because it's a little slippery and I'm not driven that car around here yeah. for so long so I should think there's a bit more time to come yeah that's what, we, that's what we thought that's uh, yeah. great I've got a flat hand where I go the team has a bit of time before the first race giving Tom the perfect opportunity to go through the car and ensure it's ready for the intense race ahead just going over the things I'm looking for here um these discs are doing changing to be fair. Uh, they've done a, a many, many races now, and you see they, as they're drilled, which aids in cooling, you get cracks begin to sort of propagate across the disc. Um, you have to monitor these really because they can they can eventually make the disc shatter if you really let them go that far. But um, yeah, these have got enough enough life in them still. Um, the RS 29s take the heat really well. Um, we're, 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 we're not really experiencing a huge amount of pad wear, which is great. Even on a circuit this fast, it's um, yeah, it's, it's really rather good, which is great. We've got a nice bit of brake cooling under the under the car, which goes onto the disc to keep it cool. So it's uh, it's not overheating the pads, which is great. Um, and there's obviously a lot of straights that's next in, which is allowing the disc to cool down between corners. Um, suspension all seems great. Um, they're fine. Just looking for leaks. This is a, a separate. The, reservoir for the dampers is actually a separate uh, these are in here under the bonnet which we adjust just got to look at these banjo bolts make sure there's no leaks there um, we've got a couple of tired uh, boots this boots pretty tired on this anti-roll bar link um, we know about these anyway they need changing but the actual joint itself is okay for now um, but yeah it's something we need to address the oil coolers here have some big AN fittings just Keeping an eye on those, make sure there's no obvious leaks around those. Um, there's no damage to the actual cooler itself as well. Um, and yeah, obviously at the back of the car we're looking for leaks around the engine, but the front, there's less to worry about the front really. So we're just um, getting ready to go out for the first race. Uh, starting in P2. Gonna, it's a standing start, which uh, Robert hasn't done for about 10 years. At the start, the start of this race, you've got the 944 Turbo in front of you. So off the standing alongside. start, alongside, sorry, off the standing start, that should you should be better, shouldn't you? Really? I mean, in there any in standing theory, starts at all, though. Yeah. But in theory, like the 911 should be better. In theory, we've got more power. Yeah. So what are we got in tyres? Well, they're on them at like uh, roughly Johnny pressures. Yeah, don't go low with the front sash. No. So, I've got 24. The front wasn't that quick, so. 24 at the The race begins and Rob gets a good start over the 944 Turbo, but Walker and his Cayman surges into first place. Amid the heat of the start, Robert misses third gear, which would have edged him ahead. Now he has a chase on his hands with the Turbo close behind.
As they get onto the Bentley Strait, the 944 Turbo unleashes its power over the 964, steaming ahead. However, McHugh locks up into Brundle, allowing Robert to regain second place. A few laps in, McHugh unleashes the turbo on the center straight, overtaking Robert for second place. It's still early in the race, and anything can happen. Deeper into the race, and still in third place, Rob is trying to make up ground on the turbo. The challenge intensifies as they navigate and lap some of the slower-paced cars, which could slow down the 944 and Walker who is still in first position. Coming up to Augie's, a tricky right-hander, Robert spots a familiar car ahead. Walker and his Cayman has fallen to second place, now navigating through the same traffic. Seizing the opportunity, Robert sets his sights on the blue and black Porsche, ready to make his move. With Walker now behind him, Robert sets his sights on the 944 Turbo up ahead. However, the clock runs out, and the race comes to an end just as Robert is gaining ground. So we got P2! Finished second! Absolutely, looked like a mega race. I cannot wait to see the uh, the onboard of that. Looked like an epic battle at the start. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, then getting... And the traffic was what really made the race, because... Yeah. Yeah, it just made... It mixed it completely up and it made it way more interesting. Totally. You're just too awesome, you are. Didn't win, mate, did we? 
Oh, there's no bloody pleasing you. Nailed it, mate. I missed third gear off the start, and then otherwise I would have been in the lead into the first corner. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah. Yeah, the 944 went backwards as planned, and, and yeah. the Cayman jumped us all. It was a really nice start. I just wasn't used to it. I wasn't paying attention. Like, uh, yeah. You need an auto box. Yeah, I think that on the road car as well. <laughs> I think so, um, the 40 minute race, we got a chance. Yeah. yeah. Those, those guys' tyres were just going worse and worse, and we were getting quicker and quicker. Yeah. yeah. What was that lock up like? But the car was alright. The car's beautiful, yeah. Brakes, brakes good? Brakes are perfect, yeah. They're actually better than brands. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's good. I mean, it's probably a. Uh, I think there's probably an eight if we look on the split report of that race. Yeah. And probably a second off the quickest the car's ever been. Yeah. yeah. No, honestly, it's so good. With the first race of the weekend ending with a second place finish, the team looks forward to tomorrow's challenges. Tonight, they'll share stories of racing, both past and present, as they prepare for the upcoming battles. With another 20-minute race and a behemoth 40-minute race on the schedule, it's crucial for the team to relax and ready themselves for the intense competition ahead. prepped the night before, this morning's task is simply to warm it up for race two. Grid positions are determined by the results of race one, so Robert will start in second place, with Jamie McHugh in first, Walker in third, and Dilnot in fourth. What's the, what's the strategy for the race, like for the first race? So Rob complained of the tyres taking a little while to come in. So as it was a standing start, um, top two came in and parked on the line, ready to go. But there was obviously 30, like 35 cars on the grid and a lot of them took a while to like get on the grid place. So so they were sat on the grid waiting for everyone to grid out at the front. Everyone took quite a while and um, it made the cars cool down basically. So what we think, if we do, is it a standing start? It is another standing start. We're gonna run the tires slightly higher, um, which of course runs the risk of wearing them out a bit quicker but it's going to be better for the tyre in the sense that we're going to get into the... Uh, we'll get into the window, the pressure earlier. window, earlier, um, and reduce the understeer Rob was feeling at the start of the race, which would be good. Um, the car was good in the second half of the race, or would it be good in the first half? Of the yeah. We don't want to overheat the tyres in the second half of the race. I run them too high, so... We'll catch the pressures, hopefully, at the end of the first race. I'll make a note of what they're doing. And then when we do them in the 40 minute race, we're going to run them a little bit higher again. And then we'll trim them down during the pit stop, which is a 60 second pit stop, like a nip round. Take a note of what they're all doing, and then essentially just trim them down uh, to where we need them to be. The cars line up in the assembly area, but one car is missing. Number 25, Jamie McHugh in his 944 Turbo has encountered mechanical issues. This means Rob will be starting ahead of the pack adding just that little bit extra pressure to the 964. Dillon in his 993 gets a fantastic start, overtaking Robert before the first corner. The race is on.
Heading into Hamilton, a fast left-hander, Christian Walker's Cayman taps the rear of Dilnot's 993, sending it off balance. Dilnot spins as they approach the corner, and both Walker and Robert maneuver to avoid colliding with the spinning car, maintaining their positions as they pass the chaos. The 964 edges out the Cayman in power on the straights, giving Robert a chance to close the gap. However, it's not an easy task as he battles to catch up. Robert fights to make up the ground between him and Walker. The track is getting busier, making it that bit more challenging. Despite his efforts to close the gap, Robert crosses the line in second place. It was a great drive, maintaining his position throughout the race. Now the final race of the weekend beckons. Well done. Good break. Good. You run out of fuel. Really? Yeah, like a lap, two laps early. Oh. And they should have called the race at the same time as yesterday's race. Oh my God. <laughs> we got an extra lap to yesterday, didn't we? Oh, so you're getting like still fuel starvation. Yeah, you? turning into the first corner yeah. with two laps to go. Oh no. Is there lap? I mean, I wouldn't call them anyway, wouldn't I? <laughs> but, uh, well, I don't know. That's still a good day. Yeah. The car was all right apart from that though. We avoided a massive crash on the first lap. Really? Yeah. Good drive though, it's really good mate. Yeah, this car was better than yesterday. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's great. It was faster, it was easier to drive. We just sell out the same as uh, that for the... For the 40 minute. Yeah. No, well done. So we just had some news, some crazy news actually. So, uh, the first race today, the first 20 minute race, we finished P2, didn't we? We were eight seconds behind the leader. Eight seconds behind the leader, that's right. So running out of fuel. Running out of running fuel. Running out of fuel, yeah. We had fuel starvation issues through but one corner or was it all corners? We did we just had a text well, from someone well, we just had a text from someone to say congratulations on your win. And we're like, well, we came second, but thank you. We just uh, Robert just had a look. And um, the leader just received a, a ten was it a ten second penalty? For a racing incident 
that happened on lab one. So now we're first. So yeah, that was a weird one. We were told that number seven car got a 10 second penalty, which obviously put us on pole. But as it happened, we were gridding up for race three and they rescinded it and put it back to the original results, which meant we start in second. This weekend has built up to this final race, the ultimate test for Rock Up Racing. With two strong second place finishes under their belt, the team now faces a daunting 40 minute race. This race will push Robert to his limits and put the car through its paces like never before. The challenge includes a mandatory one minute pit stop halfway through, demanding flawless teamwork and precision. Every ounce of skill, strategy, and endurance will be crucial as they aim for victory. This is the moment they have been preparing for, the race that will define their weekend. This is the one.
team had worked out the exact number of laps and when the pit window would open, allowing them to be the first to pit. This strategy worked perfectly, and Rob was the first car in the pit lane for their one-minute stop. The car must enter at a 45-degree angle and remain stationary for one minute. While stopped, Tom quickly runs around the car, lowering the tire pressures. Charlie holds a timer up for Rob to see the remaining time. The team must push the car back into the pit lane without using reverse. Exactly where we thought they'd be as well. Bought them down to 30. Um, yeah, mega. Excellent. Mega. You speak to him? Uh, he said everything's fine, so. so um, yeah, I literally I think he's done well. He's done, well to, he's done, he's done well to get. Like, we were the first people in here, and now everyone's started to get in, so it's going to get busy. So, mm. hopefully, yeah. the early pit stop has uh, done the thing. Yeah, he's got some clear track. Here we go. Right, this is the leader here. We need Robert to come round now. Number seven, Christian Walker, is currently in first place, but now he's in the pit. This gives Rob a golden opportunity to reclaim the lead. All Rob needs to do is drive past the pit lane while Walker is in his mandatory pit stop. There he is. Here he is. So Robert's Robert's now coming. That's the leader, so Oh he's being pushed yet. Come on Robert. Come on Rob. Come on Robert. Come on. I think you'll be right. We can see him, we can see him. Quick. Rob manages to regain first position just as Walker is rejoining the track. Now, all Robert has to do is hold on and defend his lead. Walker is keeping the pressure on Robert, relentlessly pushing and waiting for any opportunity to overtake.
The defending is intense, with Walker right on Robert's tail, waiting for any mistake. Unfortunately, that mistake is about to happen. Going through Hamilton, one of the fastest corners on the track, Robert loses balance and violently spins towards the barriers. Fortunately, the car stops just short. Wasting no time, Robert gets back on track. Now the hunted has become the hunter. Despite Robert's best efforts, he crosses the line and secures second place. Impressively, even with the spin, he manages to significantly close the gap to Walker. Robert's relentless drive and great recovery showcased his determination and resilience, turning a near disaster into a remarkable finish. The team can hold their heads high, knowing they gave it their all in a thrilling and challenging race. Well then, <laughs> what a race. I think like second is my position it this is, weekend. It, it is, isn't it? It seems it seems to be that way. <laughs> hey, it was brilliant though. You did absolutely smashed it. Yeah. How, was how, how was there much grip like towards the end? Yeah, it got a bit slippery. Yeah, yeah. Well done, mate. Cheers. No, well done, bro. <laughs> so there we have it: three action-packed races, three fantastic drives, and three second-place finishes. It's been a testing weekend on a big grid of cars filled with intense battles and a true test of nerve. The team celebrates their strong performance, but their focus quickly shifts to the next race at the U.S. Auto Show at Olton Park with Bernie's V8s and historic outlaws. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe. You won't want to miss what the team has planned for Olton Park.